welcome to the Art of Decluttering podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Amy Ravel from Simply Organised. And I'm Kirsty Faruja from Feels Like Home. We can't wait to share with you all our tips and tricks to help you declutter and keep your home and family organised. To hang out with us more, check out the Art of Decluttering on Facebook and Instagram. And we'd love you to check out our website, outofdecluttering.com.au and see all that's happening over there. Let's Let's get get started. started. So... Today is a, about an episode that I don't think any parent wants us to talk about ever because it's no, I don't think many people have this item in their house. So it's probably just like for the one or two listeners in the world mm. that do have this particular toy. So we're talking about a particular branding of toy type of toy today that we've found trouble with, but maybe nobody else does. I, I wonder if people will be able to guess it when I say that I saw a Facebook post the other day where this brand of toys have now introduced slippers Are you to put on your feet so that when you walk around the house, your feet are protected <laughs> from this toy. Can anyone guess what we're That's talking about? That's the best. They'll all know because it's in the show title, but we're, we're talking, talking about, about Lego. Lego. I um, saw a couple of great memes about Lego that I just loved. One of them was like packing up Lego and there was a dad with a shovel packing up the Lego off the floor. And then there's another video that I've seen that's like um, parent in training and it's a treadmill where people pour buckets of Lego onto the treadmill. Why some poor parent barefoot has to run on the treadmill through kilos of Lego. Yeah, so these slippers that I saw, I don't think they were necessarily done by Lego, but they're branded Lego. Like they've got the Lego symbol right across <laughs> the top, across your, the top of the top of your foot. It was ingenious, I thought. Yeah, your kids are really into Lego, yeah. Yes, they fluctuate in and out. I think Ollie's he's still into Lego. Emily is only into Lego because Oliver's into Lego sweet so she's not really into lego does she use the same lego or does she like the friends lego unfortunately much to this feminist's heart she has gone full friends and elves lego yeah whereas i was like no silly lego yeah that's all i ever had (laughs) we don't need to give into this gender bias no, one, uh, growing up we were massively into Lego mm. and one of my favourite ever Lego sets that I just wish I'd kept together as a child was a, um, a knight's castle and it had a drawbridge yes, that you I wound that. and it came yeah, down. I remember. And there was like little dungeons that you could put little men in. Oh, my gosh, like I. Little people in. Wow, that's true. Here you go, gender <laughs> bias coming out. Um, and then you would put these guys in there. It was the best Lego set ever. <laughs> oh, far out. I wish that I should look for it on eBay. Yeah. I it'll think I be, might do that. It'll be super duper expensive. Yeah. Maybe I'll just remember my childhood yeah. <laughs> wistfully. Yeah. You know when you go back to and you, you do get something from your childhood, like I always wanted those pop-up trees. You know those um, um like it was a tree that had a tree. It was a tree house. Yeah. And the top popped up and you could see inside. Oh, Do you not remember no. that? See, this is showing that age difference uh, between us. Two years. <laughs> it's a long, it's three years, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know. I'm 38. And I'm 41. Oh, there you go. Three years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it had, you press the button on the top and the top of the tree popped out. Listeners will know what I'm talking yeah. about. If anyone still has theirs, can you please post a photo in our Facebook community, so the Art of Decluttering community, so we can all know about this pop-up tree? I'll be so jealous. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my point is that when you see it now, you're like, uh, oh, it's not, not so good. impressive. Yeah. So it is that whole, let's just remember our childhood yeah. fondly without recreating it. We um, have not ever done an episode that was quite so specific in terms of kids' toys as this one. Like we're just talking to you about Lego for this episode and we've got so much to get through. So I reckon we get started because we've got some questions that we think will help you decide how to store it, what to get rid of, what to keep. So we might kick off with some of those questions to help you decide how you should declutter and organise your Lego. All right. We use the term they, meaning children, but they could also mean your husband 
or your wife or your Lego enthusiast housemate. So (laughs) do they like to play with sets and instructions or do they prefer to be creative and create things without instructions. Mm. So we find those two questions really key because it will help you determine your storage solutions around this. Yeah, when my kids were little, it was all about the instructions and it was all about doing it exactly as the picture on the box would look like. And so we would store all of our Lego within the sets. And then they kind of got a bit older and got more creative And they totally didn't care for the instructions after they'd made it the first time. Yes. First time's always instructions. That's just, I think that's a national, international rule of Lego. First time, you've got to do it properly. And then all the bricks and you go creative with it. Yes, that's exactly what Oliver has done. Emily is the other type of person, funnily enough. Why am I not surprised? My children are opposites in so many ways. And Amelie likes it built and likes keeping it built and gets very frustrated when her somebody else in our house might come along and destroy said building thing. But again, it's funnily enough, she doesn't ever play with them again. They're just for decoration oh. purposes. So I go, well, dude, you're not really playing with it. So does it really matter if it's in a thousand pieces so that's the next question that we want to encourage you to ask when you're deciding how to do this is do they display pieces once they've made them do they play with them or alternatively do they build it look at it take it all apart like what's the process so explain how it goes for the Faruja kids yes well Emily likes building it and creating it and then displaying it Oliver likes building it displaying some things and then recreating his own imaginary world around that with other pieces so in our house we have a ikea calyx unit in both the kids rooms and they have lego sitting uh, and it's laid flat it's laid um horizontal on the ground and they have books and other toys in each cube and then they've got lego sitting on top of it so that's what Amelie's room looks like. Oliver's is similar, but he also has a desk full of Lego automobiles. And that's at the moment, that's his choice at the, of what he's displaying on his desk at the moment. And he also has a, a eight Calyx unit in his wardrobe that has a variety of different types of Lego um, you know, things in it. Like he's got a cube with you know, Ninjago sets and then a cube with others. And then because he is fanatical and has been fanatical about Lego, he's kind of transitioning out of it. But then every now and again, I go in and find him playing with Lego in his room. He's also got uh, under his bed, we have storage unit under his bed, a lot like the Ravel house that has, uh, it's actually uh, not a trundle, it is from the kids' cot set. There was a trundle like drawer underneath the kids' cot and we have that still in Oliver's bedroom and then it's got lots of containers where it's all sorted by colour and he pulls that out to be creative with. He sounds like he has an insane amount of Lego. Yeah, I don't really, really want to think about how much money we and other people have spent on his mm. Lego because, yeah, let's just not go there. I've had two particular um, clients that have had children that are obsessed with Lego. One of them, the dad was also equally obsessed and they had a Lego room in their house. So in their house, like you were saying with the Kallax units, they had I think probably six of them. So we're talking like 40 or 50 cubes. And on top of the cubes were the really big pieces, like the hundreds of dollar pieces. Millennium Falcon. Yeah, 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 those but in every cube was constructed Lego. It was like a display room of Lego. And mm-hmm. that wasn't even the bits and pieces that were made. Yeah. It's incredible. So I think that's Simon and Oliver's dream. Simon's got lots of Lego up in the roof, original like 1970s, 1980s Lego. And he pulled that down a couple of years ago and we set it up in what is now his study. And we set it up as uh, Lego land. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And the kids keep... Um, encouraging him to pull it down again. And so I think in 
in an absolute ideal world, Simon and Oliver and Emily, because she does like playing with it when she can be bothered, um, they would have a Lego room and that would be cool. It was really interesting when the original Lego movie came out, it was very illuminating to Simon at the, that time. Oliver would have been about four and just getting into being able to create Lego himself mm. without having somebody sit down and help him with the instructions. And Simon at the time was very keen on him creating the Lego as per instructions and not pulling it apart again. <laughs> Good luck with that. Oh, and Oliver is so incredibly creative. Like that's his, his, that's his nature. He, he can imagine some wonderful inventions with Lego. So there was a little bit of a clash of ideals. And then Simon and Oliver went to see the Lego movie and Simon realised that he was Craggle. <laughs> that's <laughs> that, the best. That he was, I can't even remember, the, like he was the yeah. dad in yeah, that yeah, movie. Yeah. And he came home and went, okay, all right. Because in I relinquish control. Yeah, at that point, I think he wished he did have some super glue so that he could glue it all together. <laughs> even though he himself was creative. Yeah, he's very creative as a person and then he was creative as a child as well. I just think he liked the idea yeah. of seeing the the models made and not touched. In fact, I forgot. Oh, Simon has Lego in his study too. He's got two two shelves full of uh architecture Lego. Oh, that's the best. So, and that's what we buy him for his birthday and Christmas oh, presents is architecture Lego. That's he the best. loves it. He still loves it. I would love this week for us to have our community group on Facebook just flooded with photos of your Lego creations. That would be cool. I would love to see that. Like I just want to see what your kids are creating, what you're creating and what that looks like. We've got more questions though. Let's get oh, we've back got to more questions. more questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> Is once the once the Lego has created a child, once the <laughs> child has created their Lego, where do they put it? So yours kids obviously keep it on their shelves. My kids actually don't. What they tend to do, so our storage so solution looks like underbed storage with containers inside. I'll put a um, photo of that up in our community page. And the kids, once they've made something, tend to put it back in there because there's space for made pieces. They've never really been kids that like to display it on a bookshelf or anything like that. Ollie doesn't like to display it on a bookshelf for display sake. He likes displaying it there for play sake oh. so it's easily accessible. Yes. So he'll, he's got a big Ninjago collection and he lo has lots of automobiles as well. So at times he's set up a Ninjago kingdom on his desk or Star Wars kingdom on his uh, Star Wars planet on his desk as well and he'll have like armies facing each other oh, and, awesome. so, and he'll set it up and leave it like that for weeks. So we do want you to think, is it something that the children do by themselves, like in their room? My kids tend to do that. They don't, or they'll go into each other's room to play or it doesn't need to be in a communal space or a toy room or do they play with other children while they're doing the Lego um, and where do they play with the Lego? Mm. Is it brought out into a toy room or out into your lounge room or is it played like our kids in their bedrooms? Yeah, because the solution needs to work for your family because what you don't want with something like Lego is that you put it, say, up in the roof, like Simon's childhood Lego, and it's great because it's out of the way but you just can't access it. So we don't want you to hide kids' toys away so that it, they just sit there and don't get used. You've got to really think about... Can a child get it down for themselves? Do you even want them to get it down for themselves? Do you have a baby and actually if they want Lego, they need to ask you and you get it down from the top of your wardrobe for argument's sake? Yeah, and that needs to be played on the table so that the baby, the crawling child, doesn't eat mm. tiny little Lego. Yeah, which is not ideal. No, never, never ideal at all. Um, yeah, and so all these questions are designed to help you to with the goal in mind of creating a good storage solution and a good play solution for your lego so any other questions to ask around this yeah i would um have a think about whether you think your children prefer to play based on shape or color or style so my kids have their lego sorted by color 
because colour is apparently quite important <laughs> to them rather than shapes. So some kids like to have they be able to grab a wheel or they can grab a window or they can grab a particular size Lego piece. So you want to come up with a system that's going to work for the way your kids play. Yeah, we have it by colour, but then we also have one with all the people and we have one with all the jewels or and all the little bits and pieces and all like the swords and the guns and all the little bit tiny tiny little bits are in one little container too. Do you know what one of my favorite hacks when it comes to Lego is that regardless of the system that you set up whether it's lots of little containers or one big container is that you have a receptacle somewhere that every time you find a piece of random Lego you put it in there so you don't always have to go and pull a container out or get put it in the right spot. And then when the Lego comes out next, you take that little container and you sort it out. I find that just so helpful. So it can be in the playroom. It might be in the bedroom, somewhere where your kids play Lego that you go, oh, I just found like a tiny, I tiny, tiny little it. piece. Pick it up and you just put it in that container rather than maybe it might take you three or four minutes to go and put it away properly somewhere where that can go in the meantime. Excellent. Our kids um, have to clean up all the Lego before they're allowed to move on to the next thing. Yes. Not every house um, children would be able to do that. I think often kids have their Lego and it's a big old mess. Oh, totally. And so there are pieces that kind of get oh. swept under the couch or that kind of thing. Oh, totally. Yeah. Oh, that's Your house not is to pretty say- well organised. Oh, but that's not to say that we don't find Lego under the couch. We totally do months later <laughs> find Lego or a gun or, you know, something under the couch. I found some in my handbag the other day. My oh. kids don't even play with Lego anymore. They're 10 and 12. There was literally Lego in my handbag. I don't know how it got there. You stole it from a client. <laughs> I've, no, no, I did not. <laughs> I, you would never do that. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Just in case you thought that was sarcastic. <laughs> yes, no, she wouldn't. I promise you. She would be, she would drive to the other end of the earth if she thought she had stolen something from somebody. <laughs> she would wake up in the middle of the night, go, oh no, and have to get in the car and drive it back. So if you ever worry that Amy's <laughs> stolen something from you, it will never be on purpose. And if she finds it, she will drive it back to you yeah. no matter what the hour. Yeah, you can be guaranteed of that. Yep. Do you live in the hills or the North Shore? Or Sydney Central. What are some of the other areas in Sydney, Kirst? The Shire, the Inner West, Northern Beaches. So I only found out recently from Kirst that you Sydney siders have like zones and areas that you like identify yourselves by. So if you live in any one of those and you need some professional organising services to help in your home, you need to get Kirsty in because she's freaking amazing. So if you want to have Kirsten to help you declutter, email us at hello at theartofdecluttering.com.au and we're going to put you in touch. I would so love that. I would love, love, love to meet more and more listeners and to be able to help you hands on and get the most out of your house and make you able to live in freedom and grace and joy in your home. So call me, contact us, however, find me. So send us that email or DM us on Insta or private message us on Facebook. But Kirst is like there. She's ready, Sydney Siders. She's ready to come and transform your home with you. All right, let's get back to the show. So Kirsty and I both use large storage containers for our Lego with smaller dividers inside. So we find that can be really helpful. What kind of other storage solutions have you seen, Kirst, that work for different families? Well, in our family alone, we have had different storage solutions. We have used Officeworks tray dividers. Oh, I've seen you use those yeah. before. So they were um, pa- like document trays. Yeah, they were document trays. And we use that when Oliver had a smaller Lego collection and all of it could fit in. So we had quite a number of these. So they're, they're four or five trays each um, in, in, a, in a bigger container. And we had, we started off with one, moved to two, three, four. And then when we went to the underbed storage, like the Ravel house, but that worked really well for a smaller amount. And it was really good because it could, it was, it's clear. So he could see what colors. And again, Oliver likes to sort by colors rather than by shape um, or style. So 
we could he could easily see the color and could easily see which tray he needed to get out and it was easy to store it went up on his desk it went on the floor it went on the bookcase it went in the cubby holes in the bookcase like it it was very versatile and worked well for a medium size level of storage and it worked well for Oliver which was it was key for us that it would work well for him and work well for us it has to doesn't it because there's no point if the kid is not inspired when they look at their Lego collection. I've seen some really great solutions where it's like one massive tub and everything thrown in, and that works really well for some families. Um, That's how we grew up with our Lego collection. It was in like a Bunnings tub, and what we would inevitably do, tip the whole thing on the floor, we would play with it. I'm one of five. We would often play even under the billiard table. That was somewhere where mum was like, just keep it under there, and then they could still walk around. (laughs) But then at the end of the time, we would just scoop it all back up and put it in the tub. For us, we didn't need colour sorting. We didn't need a complex solution. um, And that worked really well. Yeah, and I think that's awesome if that works for you. I think it is also, like we were saying, it's about how it works for your child and and your family. It has to be both. But if you find that you do put it all in one tub and your kid's just not inspired and they're not playing with a Lego, then maybe... It's either time to get rid of Lego because they've moved on from it, but maybe it's just that they need to be re-inspired to play with it and a different storage solution might provide that inspiration and creativity for them as well. Have you seen these cool Lego bags that are drawstring? That's what we had when we were a kid. Oh, did you? Yeah. I thought they were like a new thing. No, no, no. I rem- I Early 80s, man. I'm sure they were around in the 60s, 70s too and even earlier. That is cool. Yeah, I remember going to people's, you know, <laughs> going over to people's houses for dinner way back when we used to do that thing. <laughs> and mum and dad taking the big Lego. Oh, that is cool. Or I think I also remember it when when we, or particularly Jackie and I, the older older siblings had moved on from it, but we'd have families over that had the younger kids like my brothers and sister and we'd get it out for them as well. So the concept is it's like a big piece of fabric with a drawstring around the entire edge so you can undo the bag, have it on the floor, it's like a play mat, you can play on it, all the pieces, and then when you're done you just pull the string and all the pieces kind of collapse into itself and you've got a bag you can carry around. Yeah. I'm sure you can buy them online. You can. Yeah. Or make them yourselves, to be honest. They don't seem like they would be that hard. That's. I'm thinking that my mum must have made it. Yeah. My sister could make her own. I, however, could not. No. We know that. <laughs> you haven't made your cushions. Claire said she's going to do them for me. Claire, get onto it, please. Yeah, I need to actually take the fabric around. <laughs> A bit of accountability it, here. Please. Yes, it's totally my fault. <laughs> um, one of the things that can be helpful when you're going on holidays, for instance, you know how sometimes you want to take a toy, but you don't want to take like the whole Lego collection? Mm-hmm. Just like a fishing tackle box where you can put pieces in, or a lunch box can be a really great way. I've even seen where you can like get a lunch box, hot glue gun, a board, you know, like a Lego board onto the top of it. So it's really easy to take with you to a restaurant, to a friend's house on holidays. So there are solutions where you can not want to take the entire thing, but take just a portion so you can have a bit of peace and quiet. Yes. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> <laughs> Lego tables, Kirst? Lego tables. These have always been a rage. I've been to a client's house who is my age, but just a teeny bit, little bit older and has older brothers and sisters. And we, her kids still play on this 1970s Lego table. It rocks. It was so awesome. (laughs) So her one, which is, it um, had a circle in the middle where the, where the, where the Lego went Yep, and it had a, it used to have a cover or it still does have a cover that you could cover up the Lego so if you move the table around it didn't all spill out and then you could build on top of it. Yep. But then it was like old school Maccas where the t- the seats came out from the table. Oh, Do you remember? That's a danger, yes, because those ones you always get like your leg caught in the, yeah. Yeah, the folds. But it wasn't about – it was <laughs> – that's not why I'm remembering. Oh. It. I'm just rem- <laughs> look at you, occupational health and safety queen here. I know. <laughs> or you could think you're like danger, danger, Will Robinson, danger. Whereas I'm show. like, how awesome! <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, it, I'm doing lots of hand movements for listeners. I'm really sorry, but I'm sure everybody remembers the old school Maccas in the kids section, particularly where table in the center and then metal prongs holding up the seat. And that so is her, very cool. but there's loads of different variations. You can spend a small, you know, the GDP of a small country on Lego tables if you or, want, or you can hack your own. And hack your own. Yes, I've seen some really cool ones. There's heat if you get on Pinterest or even get on Google and you search IKEA Lego hack, you're going to come up with so many options, and you're going to love it. Yeah. But they're really good because it does contain it and the kids have a designated space to play. Mm. So if you've got kids that really like micro micro figurines, is that what they're called? Is that the right word? Mini figs. Mini figs. Sorry. Got the wrong. I know. She's getting the eye. Getting schooled. She's getting the eye. (laughs) There are some, you know, really thin photo rails that you can install on walls and then have them up there. So think vertical too. I've seen online people that have hot glued or nailed Lego boards to the walls. And then stick their Lego to the walls and play. The, there is so many ideas. Yes. So many ideas. I know, like keys, you can hop. Oh, we like, did that. Yeah. We had that at our house. I loved it. And then the Lego got worn through. It didn't work anymore. Um, Kirst. Amy. At what point do you think people should start thinking about reducing their Lego collection and going the decluttering? We've talked heaps about organising, but is Lego something you should just hold on for generations like Syme has or is it something that you can move on? What is your personal experience and opinion? I find that Lego can be a very emotional and sentimental item for people because it has brought you so much joy or you see how much joy it's brought your children and you think, well, I want my grandchildren to have that joy or I want my children to have that joy, like... Um, so I think that it is uh, a very great question you ask, Amy, <laughs> and I don't know I have uh, one size fits all because every family is unique and every situation is unique. So I do think that if you – let me think. What do I think about this? I <laughs> think that – I would be a hypocrite if I said that you should get rid of it all because (laughs) I've just said we've got it in the roof. (laughs) However, as I keep saying to somebody that lives in my house with me, that it is not doing anybody any good up in the roof and so it should be brought down and played with or it's we could reduce the amount in the roof. (laughs) We found that to be the good solution for my kids. I think one of the hurdles that a lot of people face when they think about decluttering Lego is what do I declutter? Like do I just take a handful out and sell like a snap lock bag of random pieces? Because there's also the temptation that you want to sell a set, but what if you're missing a piece? Like do you still sell a pa- sell set if you don't miss a piece? How does it work? So what my kids do is they do sell their Lego and they – so do you remember back in the episode called Our Kids, Jesse talked about how before he declutters something, he likes to have like one final play. Yes. He does that with his Lego. So before he sells it, he assembles the thing so that we can take a photo of it assembled and we know, do we have all the pieces or do we need to say, hey, it's missing this little piece? Do you know that you can buy just pieces yeah. from Lego? Yeah, you can buy them online, but there's a shop not far from here that you can actually go, but they're expensive. Yeah, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend that if you're then going to go on and sell it if it's just missing one little piece. No, but if you're buying a set that's missing a piece secondhand, you might want to buy the replacement. Yes, or if you're like us and got given a monorail set from my dad that we bought in Denmark in 1989 and subsequent children have lost pieces, then you can hop online and actually look up the instructions and find out how many pieces you need that's and cool. you can go and buy the missing pieces. That is very cool. Yes. All right. All that to say, keep going. No, I like that idea. So our kids then sell sets when they're selling Lego, if at all possible. And I think eventually we're going to get to the point where they just sell what's left because they're kind of going the big sets and they're assembling. And sometimes it takes them an hour and a half to find all the pieces amongst all the Lego and they assemble it, they take a photo, they list it online, da-da-da-da. But my kids sold enough Lego 
a year ago that they bought themselves a PS4 because they wanted a PS4 and I was like, mama ain't paying for that. And they're like, well, if we sell our Lego, can we? I was like, sure you can. Gives you something to do and you earn your own money. <laughs> so if you are stressed, like how do I declutter Lego? Um, don't throw it in the bin. Worst case, if you don't want to sell it, put whatever pieces you can find in a snaplock bag and send it to an op shop because they will sell it. And then you're donating them to charity effectively. And you can sell them in big lots. Like, hello, hop on Facebook Marketplace and see how many Legos are sold in just tub loads. Yeah. And another option, our local primary school has a Lego club for kids that are not comfortable to go outside at lunchtime and kind of rough and tumble and be in that big, loud, noisy environment. So once a week, there's Lego club and they're always looking for donations. So And they don't need a set. They just want stuff. Yeah. Awesome. So all those questions that we gave you right at the start of the episode, you might be out at school pickup, you might be walking the dog, you might be in the car and you didn't kind of catch all of them, we've created a downloadable for you. So you can just jump onto our website, theartofdecluttering.com.au, go to podcasts, you'll be able to see and it'll be slash Lego and you'll be able to download that down, download the downloadable and you'll have all the questions so that you can really get involved in this. And I think we're going to hear that a lot of our listeners have gone out, sold some Lego and made some money. And I want to know, what are you saving up for? You're going to go out for dinner? You're going to go skydiving, treetop climbing, swimming with the dolphins? <laughs> if the Lego is just sitting there, Kirst. Yeah, make some money from it or put it up in your roof. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> Scrap that. <laughs> I can't wait to see uh, people have got so many wonderful ideas about how they store their Lego. So come on over to our Facebook community group and share your tips on how you store your, and organize your Lego. And, you know, maybe we'll create our own Facebook marketplace with people wanting to sell their Lego on our platform this week. <laughs> <laughs> and I think if you're holding on to your Lego thinking like Simon did, hey, my kids, I want my kids to get into Lego, have a think. Is it more likely that you're going to want to buy them the newest and greatest sets and ones they see at the shop? Or do you think they're going to play with your sets? Because I think a lot of the sentimentality around keeping Lego is, but I want my kids and my grandkids to play with it. But I find my experience with clients is they actually go out and buy them sets because there's great joy for children in the box and the unwrapping and the brand new. So I just challenge you to be realistic about how much grandkids are actually going to play with your Lego. Yeah, and so keep some of it for sure if that's what you really want to do, but maybe keep like one set or, you know, a house or like one particular type of Lego because we know that you absolutely adore your grandchildren and you'll want to lavish upon them. And so as much as we're about... Uh, not being uh, beholden to consumerism and buying things just for the sake of things. We also want you to be realistic about what you're going to be doing in the future. And you're probably, like Amy said, want to spoil your grandchildren rotten just to annoy their parents. <laughs> um, and you'll buy them new stuff. So just think about how much you are actually holding on to. Amy has a review for us. Yeah, so I'm going to be reading out an iTunes review from iTunes New Zealand. <laughs> so what I've discovered since we last went in the studio is that we have reviews from all over the world and we just didn't know about them. So I logged on and found them. So Wendy Richdale from New Zealand says, excellent and down to earth. I've really enjoyed this podcast so far. It's excellent, realistic advice delivered in a lovely, friendly way. Thanks, guys. Keep up the good work. Oh, thank you, lovely. We love our international listeners. It's so cool. I think and we're up to about 50-50 now. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. 50% of our listeners are in Australia. 50% are elsewhere in the world. Did you know, I know we're wrapping this episode up, but I just have to tell you that... 10% of English as a first language residents of the country of Greenland listen to our podcast. <laughs> Is that not unreal? 10%. Or just one person has listened to it a lot. Well, possibly. Now, I sh okay, let's, let's tell you the figures. There are 800 people in Greenland who speak English as their first language. Mm -hmm. And we've had so far this year 
80 downloads of our podcasts. So there's like 10% of, like, that's pretty funny. That's, that's pretty, pretty cool. funny, but it also makes me go, that's one person. Possibly. Who's binged on our podcast. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Greenland. Hello, Greenland. <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking for an episode to listen to next, we suggest you go all the way back in your feed to episode one, which is all about children's toys. So if you're like, oh, I've got the Lego sorted, what do I do with all the rest of the toys? All the way back and you'll be able to see that episode at episode one. Yay! Don't forget to download the downloadable at outofdecluttering.com.au. Yay. And we can't wait to be back with you again next week. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us. If you've learned something awesome today, we'd love you to leave us a review on iTunes or Facebook so others can find our podcast too. Don't forget you can see the show notes in your podcast app or over at our website, artofdecluttering.com.au. So if there's anything you want more info on, check it out there. If you'd like to join our supporter community, you can do so over at patreon.com slash decluttering. We hope you have a great rest of your day and enjoy the freedom. 